about a double blind placebo study on 35 year olds that had been done with the redox molecules. Would you be able to talk us through this? Because this is brilliant. Yeah, that was interesting. I mean, that came out um, probably about three months after I'd really started to work with the um, technology. And I kind of laughed to just digress a little bit because I turned down that information in 2011 for the same reasons like, yeah, you know, I really, that doesn't seem that significant to me and I really miss the boat I mean I kind of realize now between 2011 and 17 when I first when I finally turned around and I nearly missed it again <laughs> ironically <laughs> um, you know that there were obviously so many people that I could have helped very differently with this but the significance of that study I find fascinating from many different levels so first off they started with 35 year olds and there's actually an important piece about that because I've been reading it actually only in the last couple of months that scientifically they've analyzed that the metabolism, I think often people think about metabolism as just to do with weight loss, you know, either you're, you're thin or you're fat or whatever, and it's the metabolism is all about diet, but it isn't. Metabolism actually represents literally the function of every cell, the energetic production um, for anything to take place. And it's interesting that I was reading that um, our metabolism is energetic and kind of hits this tipping point at 35, and then we go downhill. And, and I was reading some things that were saying that we're actually going to spend from 35 to the end of our life struggling and never ever going to be able to achieve and maintain or restore the level of metabolism that we have cellularly up until that point. And that kind of overlays for me um, this piece about the double blind study on the ASEA. Here they were, 35 year olds. So they analyzed their genetic expression, the signaling level, the efficiency with um, uh, blood work. It went through this fancy multi-million dollar machine and affirmatrix array for whatever we want to know about that. But uh, so they tested it. Now, I think one thing to kind of, uh, you know, emphasize about this is that at 35, their gene signaling had already turned off. It was already diminishing. Now, we know, I know I've read studies um, that show that um, pesticides affect our redox signaling. Um, so we know that there's a huge deluge that we're all suffering from in this particular lifespan where we're at, you know, that we're all being hit by not simply stress, but, you know, the pesticides, the chemicals, the environmental toxins, it's coming at us left, right and center. So they have these 35 year olds, they do the blood work on them and they see that their genes have already started to turn off. They put them on the ASEA eight ounces a day for eight weeks, and then they retest their gene signaling efficiency. Uh, now, here's really what I think was particularly stunning. 100% of the people taking the redox uniformly experienced a 20 to 31% improvement in gene signaling efficiency in five major areas. Well, I actually do a caveat here because I sat with uh, one of the lead PhD guys when this got released. We happened to be at a dinner and I talked to him at great length. And he said that, in fact, all the genes had uniformly experienced this improvement. But genetically, I don't think we're advanced enough and they don't they haven't mapped every single gene that exists. So in the report, they chose to simply talk about the five that are fully mapped and understood at this point. And so that was the um, innate immune signaling system. Hello, that's, you know, that's our initial defense line against everything, right? Um, uh, in inflammatory signaling, mm -hmm. cardiovascular health with vein elasticity, that's a pretty significant aspect to it. Um, Digestive enzyme production, which, you know, being a digestive health specialist kind of caught my attention straight away because that's all I do is enzyme stuff. And then the other side of the coin that if we are unable to absorb and we have an inhibition in how we absorb, it actually changed that factor too. Uh, and then the fifth one was hormone, uh, hormone signaling and vitality and kind of wellness. So 100% of people had these uniform shifts. 
Now, we always talk about the fact that this is made from what's in our cells, the same thing our body uses, which is the saline in our cells, sodium chloride and water. So, of course, there's a lot of misinformation because people put a lot of junk out there on the web, right? You know, oh, this is just salt water. Well, you go make salt water in your kitchen. You're not going to get the same outcome from this at all. It is not. And if it was that simple, why would we have a company that's been manufacturing this for 12 years with multi-million dollars of investment and patents and proprietary? process to come up with something that's entirely different than just go to your kitchen and pour some water and stick some salt in it right but they gave them saline on the placebo group now two pieces 100 percent of people taking the redox had this improved benefit on the placebo it was a zero percent change oh. That struck me in and of itself, forget a seer, that in itself is really remarkable because in double blind studies, placebo will influence anything, right? If we believe there's a certain shift, I mean, that's why they have placebo. So when that study came out, I actually went back to a number of research scientists and I said, okay, tell me, you know, how often if you're doing research on drugs or whatever you're studying, do you ever see a 100% response to whatever you're testing and a zero on the placebo? And they all said to me, never. No. Don't see that. So what does that mean? A couple of things, right? At 35, you don't feel your genes are already turning off. You know, you only know that by looking at blood work. We don't notice that. But I think we do begin. That correlates with why this tipping point is coming at 35, because we're now on the slide. <laughs> We've already started a slide. We start that around 15. I mean, in terms of production of these molecules drop. But I think cumulatively, we don't necessarily become particularly aware of the fact that we are aging but how many people by the time they get to 40 start to notice what has already been building in the previous 20 years and so there's those layers that will tie into this um, but you know I looked at that and I said wow as a practitioner you know everything lies in the first two immune response and inflammation I mean we know that disease creates inflammation inflammation creates disease so there you go around that affects everything that anyone's coming to the table with and then you have these three other major things but here's what's interesting we have five names there for single gene names but they're like a domino effect you open a door and then they move on Right. So this is not a one and done thing. I mean, this is, you know, those wonderful domino games that people do when they roll on and roll on and roll on. That's my picture in my mind. But here the inflammatory signaling marker, for example, there was 15 other markers. Things that those influence the things like serotonin that keeps us feeling happy. Right. Who do we know that? feel stressed and anxious about what we've gone through in the last two years how many teenagers are really struggling with feeling uh, you know at ease with themselves I and mean, that's enormously important and if you have gut dysfunction you're going to have that serotonin dysfunction I mean they go together um, things like circadian rhythm and sleep that affects every single one of us um, you know things to do with insulin signaling thyroid how we build brains with BDNF this fancy thing called BDNF which is building brain signals hello we all need to keep those in in good check and interestingly the bdnf piece also links back again to insulin signaling and metabolism so you know there's all sorts of things that go on in this so when we say we're improving our inflammatory signaling markers we're also improving multiple things behind it um, there was a, another study they looked at it uh, you know another eight weeks after people had stopped taking it and what was really interesting was that the original marker levels that people had whatever was their kind of backstop point where they were operating that was kind of where we the, they had reset themselves to back to this level of less function than they had with the ASEA so I think a really significant thing that shows us you know, this affects everybody is there for everyone.